<laughs> hey guys, welcome back. This is my son Christian. My name is Micah and I want to show you this cool little uh, storage platform I made in the back of the, the back seats of the truck. And this gives me a little removable platform. We can put the fridge, um, we could put a case, we can use it just for storage. It's been an awesome little accessory and it's a fun DIY project that doesn't take too much work and doesn't cost very much money. So let's get into it. All right guys, so here's what it looks like in the truck. Now, it may seem like only you're only adding a little bit of storage, but in fact, when you remove this part of the seat, you get an extra six inches here, and you get an extra eight inches here, basically, of nice flat surface, and that allows you to put, I, for myself, I put my camera case right here, I can put my dry food storage right here. Um, whatever you wanna do, it gives you a lot more usable space, as opposed to, as you can see with the seat, you've got it coming out and then it drops off here. So it's kind of a simple thing, but it really, really helped with trips. Um, for me, just keeping stuff organized, keeping stuff from just getting crazy over the truck. And you, of course, you can still put stuff under here. So it kind of just creates more storage um, usability in the truck and it's totally removable. It's mounted right to where the original seat mounts in. Only thing that is different is this is just a longer bolt instead of the one that I took out for the other seat um, and then you've also got this cool panel in the back and I've got some fun plans for this this is just a piece of wood right now but I think I might switch to aluminum and I'm gonna screw it in or do some kind of quick release right now it just has these velcro straps but behind here is the cell phone booster um, wired up and that's just a nice place to hide it if you want you know, my other plans are going to be adding a power inverter with plugs, and then here I'll have some USB ports um, and a 12 volt outlet. That way, when I get a fridge, I can put the fridge right here, plug it in. I could also put my laptop here, plug it in, and charge it. Or maybe just you got you're on a road trip and you need some powerful USB ports, and you got a bunch of phones or people with you. Being able to plug your phone in, plug your laptop in. For me, plug my camera gear in. Um, I'm always leaving the house with batteries that are like half full. So that's something I'm really looking forward to adding here some usability The cool thing is too once you wire that all in this panel can stay here You can pull this out You can put the seat back and you can see it's going to close no problem with those flat panels added here. So That's this this is more like I'm looking forward to using this more and, and developing some more um, usefulness out of it this is kind of like the current state and it's super simple, totally removable, and I wanted to show it to you. And now let's talk about how we can make it, the measurements, how simple it is, the parts I bought, and how I made these very simple uh, brackets to fit the truck without having to drill any new holes um, or modify anything. So I'm gonna remove it and we'll take some measurements. Right, so here we are. These are the simple tools I'm using. All it is is a 9 16th um, socket and you can use it, you know, you could use a wrench, you could use a socket. I'm going to use this really handy little impact. This was about $40 and I've had it for a few years and it's just so helpful to have something like this when you're working on car projects. Just speed stuff up a bunch. So I'm going to loosen this with this guy and then, because this thing's not super powerful. Um, oh gosh, that one's not a 14. This one is a 14. Let's get that one. Um, I guess when I bought this one, I got the right length and thread, but I didn't match the head size. That's okay. Let's do this one. So that's one of the original ones. Let's see if I can reach in here and get this one. Okay. There we go. That's for the front. Now I'm going to go grab the right size for that one. I'll be right back. So I got a 15. Uh, that seems to be the right size. So we're going to switch that out. And this will be the last one. Okay, so you can see this one is a little bit longer than the other uh, bolts that come with this. And that is because it just got to reach in just a little bit farther. So that's what I used there. Now we should be able to just pull this guy out. Take this up. I'm guessing there's gonna be a lot of crumbs here, so I've got my vacuum on hand. Uh, right here. There. Oh, I forgot I added this little guy here. 
All right. There we go. So that is the platform. Let's put this on the ground and we'll get some measurements and look at these little simple brackets that I made as well. So let's get to the dimensions. These are just the uh, dimensions that I picked for my personal track. Um, they worked out good. They give a little bit of room uh, in the front of the board between the seats. So you still have the adjustability and to recline and stuff. So it's not all the way to the end of the seat, um, but the width is perfect as well for my seat. I tried to take full advantage of the space that was there just to get the most storage space. So for me, this looks like uh, 34 and a half inches long and 21 inches tall. So if you have a first generation double cab Tacoma, those would be the measurements that I recommend. Um, now let's talk about how I made these simple brackets for mounting the board um, into the three places that the standard seat mounts itself from the factory. So you don't have to drill anything, you don't have to thread anything. I made them out of scrap pieces of metal I had lying around the house, but this is a good example of something that you could buy at the hardware store and make these. So this is just a sheet of aluminum. I think this is um, 3 16th or quarter. It doesn't have to be this exact stuff, but this is nice and heavy duty, but aluminum is easy to work with and bend. So you get one of these plates and you can draw out with your marker um, each one of your brackets. For the front and rear bracket, you or front and side bracket, you really only need just like a strip. So something like this. And then you need a way to bend it. To bend it, you can use an angle grinder to score uh, the inside edge of your bend. So you would go with this flat bar, score it right where you want to bend it, and then you can bend it uh, with some leverage using even just a crescent wrench like this. Um, tighten it up on it. <laughs> this one's a little rusty. This will give you enough leverage if you hold onto the bottom there to be able to bend something like by pulling pressure on it like that. If you don't have one of these, you might have a pair of pliers or a pair of channel locks in your toolbox, or a channel locks, uh, sorry, vice grips, and you can grab onto it, do the exact same thing. So that's how I put the bins in. Let's take a look at what they look like. So this is the bracket that goes to the front of the seat. And this is probably the Although these are all very simple, this was the most tricky to figure out. But like I said, still very simple. And this one is six inches tall. Now it bolts into the bottom here of this uh, metal bar, just for a little extra uh, stability. This is a piece of angle iron. You could get this from the roadside, from like say a metal bed frame. Um, and you can use that same angle grinder to cut a piece out. I just added this. It's kind of optional, but it gives it a little bit more uh, stability of this bracket. And you can see it's not even that tight. But this is just a piece of aluminum cut in a long strip. I don't even know. On this bend, you can see I used the angle grinder, scored it here, scored it down there, and used that to fold this bend. All right, now let's take a look at what these brackets look like. This is probably the trickiest one, and it's still simple. So it's just a piece of plate, right? Like a, like a long piece. Uh, I bent it at the bottom there. Gave you, you don't have to follow these exact things either. So, uh, but it's basically just one bend here. It bends back so that it follows the angle of the seat. And then this little bend, you can just keep adjusting it as you're trying to mount it. But that's a very simple one. Um, the length that I ended up using was six uh basically six inches from the platform to this hole where it mounts into the floor of the truck in the uh, factory hole for the seat so six inches off the board however you end up making your um, bracket seemed to work well for me now for the one on the uh, back here this is another piece of, pl uh, of plate like this, just a simple strip. 
but I added a, <laughs> and I actually just broke it, which is a good sign that I need to use something a little thicker than what I had. Um, this stuff is much thicker than quarter, but this would just be uh, in this shape right here, draw it out flat, score the edge, and then bend it like this, put your hole in, and you're good to go. Uh, like I said, I made this out of scrap that I found around the house. So this is a good indication that the piece of scrap I used for this one, much too thin. So I'm going to make a new one out of this thicker quarter and replace that. But you can see the pattern there is very simple. And, oh, another point is I put this piece of angle iron um, on the bottom of the platform just to give this more stability. But you know what? I don't think that's really necessary. This is three quarter inch plywood and it's plenty strong. So if you want to do this, you can do this. I don't know if I would go buy a piece of angle iron. I would just, you could also find like an old bed frame. <laughs> a lot of times at the junkyard or a trash, you could cut a section out if you want. But like I said, not totally necessary. So the other bracket is the one that goes into the seat on top. And again, piece of metal I found around the house and just, this one I didn't score. I just put a bend in and or actually i might have already found this with a bin and that's why it doesn't have a score drilled the hole for the bolt and then four little wood screws holding this down another really simple bracket so that is the metal brackets for the seat platform and like i said this is a good beginner project it's using some basic tools that if you don't already have are awesome to have in your garage and are going to help you do a lot more projects later on so this is about 40 bucks a set of these um impact ready drill bits is like 30 bucks and it comes with all these different sizes so definitely a good investment and then these are just basic tools you could probably find at a garage sale but you can definitely just grab at your home depot or ace hardware these are awesome to have if you don't already basic tools guys it's super nice yes you're going to spend a little money and up front but tools pay themselves off in the long run very quickly so that's the tools that's the metal bending let's talk about the wood and this carpet oh i forgot i wanted to add one more dimension that might be helpful if you have this exact track um, and you're making the same platform with the same dimension so the bracket here is at six inches for the front and from the back it was about i think six and a half I know seven and a half where the T came up into the bottom of the seat. So from the very back, if you're using this exact dimensions for the exact same truck, a double cab uh, first generation Tacoma, then those measurements might have been helpful for you. Oh, and this one is at 25 by six and a half basically. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so for final materials here, I've got a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Um, I like using this stuff. I have used it in the bed platform and the drawers that I made previously. And I actually had this laying around. So I cut this out kind of as just like a template and then just ended up using it. This stuff is nice and light, but it's also pretty dang stiff. So it won't bend when you lean on it with your knee or whatnot. Whatever you put in there, is, it's not gonna flex at all. So very cheap. You can get an entire four by eight foot sheet of this for about 40 bucks. Um, but you can also find it a lot of, uh, you know, on the side of the road sometimes or scrap and it's super useful stuff. So piece of plywood. This is outdoor carpeting from Home Depot um, and it was $18 for an entire roll. Hey bud, how's it going? Good. Um, and pick this up. This is a great match for the interior of a tan Tacoma. I think it also comes in black or gray, but this stuff is super heavy duty and you can wash it. And I think it's kind of mildew proof. So that's a big bonus as well. To attach it, I just cut the shape of the board, added a couple inches on each edge, and then folded it over one side at a time, used some staples from a tack stapler, and also added a couple screws, one on each corner, just to help uh, hold it there in place nice and secure. And it's doing just fine after about mm, four months, I think, I've had this in here. So that's it. That's the seat platform, the simple brackets, it's a super simple project. You can use basic tools. To cut this wood, I just used a skill saw. You could use even use a handsaw, but it's very simple. 
and kind of a fun project. Right, so that wraps up today's video. I hope it was helpful for you. I'd love to hear your ideas on how it might be improved, how you might use this in your track. If you have any questions about what I covered, the materials, or if I missed something, feel free to add them in the comments and I'll get down there and try and answer them best I can. Like I said, this is a simple uh, little addition of storage that is removable, doesn't require any damage to the truck or cutting or anything that's permanent. And I'm actually more excited about the space that it makes to do some more supporting mods. Like I said, the uh, inverter in there, um, you could use a 12 volt panel, um, some, some switches and stuff. I'm excited to add that. I think that's really gonna up the functionality for the personal use of my truck. Um, I'd love to hear what you might be using it for. And now I've got to make that bracket that I broke and probably hopefully improve it. But I'm gonna to get to that, clean up this mess. I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. Um, if you're new to the channel, I'd love it if you subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. I'm surprised at how many subscribers I have on here for the quality of these videos. <laughs> They're filmed on a GoPro and edited on my iPhone 7. So I really appreciate all the feedback and hope you guys have a good day. Talk to you later.